Hey everyone, welcome to chapter 9 of Experiencing MIS. Uh, this week we are going to be talking about social media information systems. Now, I think it's uh, pretty undeniable to say that social media has become a major part of our society nowadays. A lot of people use at least one social media platform. Now, the information systems involved in social media come into play in a lot of different ways. There's information systems actually being used by social media platforms. There's information systems being used by some of the people and organizations that actually use the social media. So let's get into it. So the first thing I want to do in this discussion is I want to talk about the terms community and social network, which for the purposes of this discussion are going to be separate terms from social media. So a social network and a social media are going to be separate. Um, now, a community itself is a group of people. Um, and when we talk about a community, we are only really talking about the members themselves. You'll see why I make this distinction in just a second. But all of the members in a community share something in common, whether that is... Uh, a bunch of people who happen to live together, that could be a community. A bunch of people who share some kind of common interest could be a community. A bunch of people who live in the same geographic region and a larger scale, like same city or county or something like that, could also be a community. But typically, there's this idea of all the members of a community sharing something in common, whether it's something they like or something they are or something that they do. So that is a community. Now, on the other hand, you have a social network. Now, a social network is not something that's really physical, but it's more of a social structure, or sometimes it's also represented as a mathematical structure. So it's this theoretical construct that describes a group of people. And it, in particular, it defines and includes relationships between members. So you can have social networks that are built based on members sharing particular interests. And this whole defining and including relationships between members part of it might be something like uh, we can build up a social network where two members are defined to be related or connected or something like that if they have at least one common interest. That tends to be the um, way that social networks are treated by social media is we build up these social networks by observing how users act on social media and say, oh, look, I can identify a relationship between this person and this person if they have a particular interest that they share or a geographic location or something like that. And then we can try to recommend that they follow each other or friend each other or whatever vocabulary happens to be of importance in the social media platform. But a social network talks about not just the people that are involved in the network, but it also includes the relationships between those people, how they are related to each other. Um, and it will likely include multiple communities. Uh, let me show you an example really quick. So what we have right here is a diagram of a few different communities. Um, You'll see this community A, B, C, D, and E, and all of the users of a particular social media site that are contained within those communities. Now, a social media site is typically going to provide interest-related communities. So this might be something like a Facebook group, or um, now I'll admit I'm not the most familiar with Twitter, uh, there might be some sort of community within uh, different hashtags or something like that. I don't entirely know how it works, but I think the Facebook group is a really great example of communities because these are people um, who are joining these particular groups because they are interested in whatever is going on in those groups, whether it's a group 
to talk about local news or a group to talk about something that uh, everyone in that group is very interested in, like a movie or a TV show or something like that. Uh, Facebook, uh, I think, really provides a clear idea for these communities, whereas with other social media sites, you typically kind of have to build the communities yourself. But these are all a whole bunch of different communities right here where you see um, a whole bunch of users being grouped into communities based on whatever shared interest. And you can also see these uh, arrows between users right here, especially to talk about sort of the overlap between um, different communities right here. So user one is a member of community B and community C and thus has connections with everyone in community B and everyone in community C by virtue of shared interest. Uh, these arrows are going to represent the relationships between users that I was talking about, and they are defined based on shared interest right here. Now, to me, this graph, uh, that this uh, whole thing, this diagram does look a little bit incomplete just because there's no uh, arrows connecting, say, user nine and 10 or user three and four. You know, those pairs both of those pairs also share the communities with each other. So three and four are both in community A, nine and 10 are both in community D. Also user seven is listed twice in community C and community E, uh, which kind of makes this little triangle between one, seven and four uh, that should exist based on the shared interests right there. Um, kind of makes that fall apart a little bit. So I would say this isn't the best representation and unfortunately I didn't have much time to make my own. All that being said, I would consider this to be a social network because uh, you have not just the users right here, but also the relationships between the users. The fact that they are within these same communities right here or the fact that they are connected to other users based on shared interest would count as relationships. So this would be a social network and this social network contains multiple communities. You're not just looking at how everyone is connected in one community. You're looking at how all these other communities are connected to each other. And if you're the social media site, you might be then trying to look and see, you know, is there some amount of shared interest between all these different communities? Could I then try to manufacture more connections to try to get users engaging with other communities and getting more involved and that kind of stuff, having a better user experience on the social media site? But I might be getting a little bit ahead of myself with all of this. This, I would say, is a diagram that represents a social network that contains five different communities. Okay, now I've said social media quite a bit. Uh, I'll actually define it right here. Social media is a, an IT platform, an information technology platform for large user networks to share content. And it's going to facilitate the formation of communities. And as it's facilitating that formation of communities, it's also then going to start building up its own social network. network. So uh, social media like this is all about building social networks. And the way that these social networks are built is through allowing users to share content. And then users who are interested in other users' content will try to connect to that user, either by following that user or um, friend requesting them or liking posts so they see more of it or any of those kinds of actions. Now with social media, you see a lot of different uh, disciplines that are involved in the creation of social media. Now, of course, there's the management of information systems uh, and computer science, which is all about the physical infrastructure and the software and data and all that kind of stuff that is involved with social media. Uh, you'll see 
marketing because a uh, social media site has to pay the bills and more on that in a future video. Uh, you'll also see organization theory and psychology and sociology, which allows social media sites to understand how users make connections and how information might spread through a social network and how social networks might change and evolve over time and how to form communities within those social networks and try to get overlap between communities and understand what that overlap means so that you can then try to recommend uh, relevant communities for other users and all those kinds of questions. They're trying to understand human behavior in order to get as much connection and engagement with the social media site as possible. They're also trying to look at how to reward users for using the social media site. I think that goes a lot into psychology right here, but social media sites will put a lot of work into trying to optimize how much users use their site. They're trying to capture as much user attention as possible. And once they have that user attention, they're able to, through the user making more content and, and interacting with more content and all that kind of stuff, understand that user better and collect more data on them so that they can further keep them engaged in the site as well as serve advertisements and all that kind of stuff. Now, social media information systems are the information systems that support social media. So this is going to involve content sharing, uh, the stuff that actually lets users uh, share content, maybe figure out what content to share, and then the stuff that actually lets them put the content on the social media site and display it to others, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the advertisement systems, the systems that collect data on users and communities in order to best try to uh, profile those users assign a whole bunch of interest to them, and then serve the most relevant advertisements possible so that users are more likely to engage with those advertisements. Uh, user and community knowledge systems. Uh, this is actually tied in with the advertisement systems as well as some of the recommendation stuff I was talking about before, but they're going to build this huge amount of knowledge on individual users as well as a huge amount of knowledge on the actual communities itself. I mean, a, so a social network in and of itself would be part of a community knowledge system, seeing how all of these communities are structured and are related to each other across a social network. Doing a huge amount of mathematical representation and algorithms based on those mathematical models, as well as sociological and psychological studies on these models are going to be really important for making profit from running a social media site. And there's a lot of other things that go into supporting a social media site, as well as supporting, um, you know, when a business is actually doing social media related stuff, they'll have their own social media information systems as well that will support their content creation and engagement and all that kind of stuff. So they're very, very complicated systems. So there's three main organizational units in a social media site. Uh, there's the actual social media provider, the company that's in charge of making the whole social media platform run. There's the users, uh, the people who actually use the social media, and there are the communities that form uh, on social media. Now, with the social media providers, uh, these people will be providing the platforms enabling the creation of social networks. Uh, essentially, they are providing a platform, they're inviting users on, users make content and start following each other and forming communities, and eventually uh, all of that kind of stuff ends up creating a social network. So the social media provider's uh, job in this is to build the platform and allow content sharing and allow people to find each other. 
So these providers would include Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, and so on and so forth. There's a lot of social media providers out there these days. I definitely left off many, 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 many uh, providers. So, uh, you know, if, if this was me actually making videos for YouTube itself rather than making this as a teaching thing, uh, something I would say is put in the comments any social media platform that I uh, forgot, and that would be an example of engagement, or at least an inv invitation for engagement. And if any of y'all watching actually did comment a social media platform that I didn't put in my short list, then that would uh, be taking advantage of the platform that the social media provider, in this case YouTube, uh, via Google, um, has provided for everyone and uh, that actually builds community and that gives them more information to add to their social network that you know you engage with the content that I created so that's a connection that they can add within the social network. Now the growth of social media platforms has been huge over uh, the recent years. We see these huge amounts of growth uh, in this graph. It's between 2014 and 2019, and you can see a lot of growth across all of these different platforms, as well as the growth of the U.S. population across all of those years as well. And what that means is, you know, social media is just being used more. They're collecting a lot more information. They have these massive, massive social networks uh, networks that they are trying to get all this information about. And they are, at this point, uh, competing with each other for user attention because user attention fundamentally is how they make their money. Uh, if users stay engaged, then they're going to keep on coming back to the platform and they can collect more information on the user and then do better advertiser targeting, all that kind of stuff. Again, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Um, we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Now, the users themselves are going to be any entity that uses social media sites in order to build relationships. And this could include individual people, it could also include organizations. Um, you could, in theory, also talk about uh, bots that are being used uh, to build uh, to uh, build engagement and all that kind of stuff on social media. That's a much more prevalent thing right now. But then again, you know, is that bot really the entity that's trying to build relationships, or is it the person or organization that built that bot? that social media engagement bot that's really uh, trying to use the social media site to build relationships for whatever reason, right? So I, I won't include bots on this list because I do think it's more of the people or organizations that build those social media bots are the ones uh, trying to build relationships here. But regardless, that's what users are, is any entity that uses social media in some way. Now, organizations can actually be users and providers. Uh, an organization can host an internal wiki or a blog or a discussion board for their employees. So they would be a social media provider because they are building a social network that way. Uh, but also they can be users themselves because they can have say, a, a, an official presence within those social media uh, things that they have built, whether that's like a higher up in HR or a person who is specifically in charge of those internal social medias, all that kind of stuff. That's a bit more of an edge case. Uh, most of the time when we're talking about organizations using social media, we're going to talk about organizations using social media platforms that were built by a different organization that happens to be the provider. Um, and those organizations are going to be interacting 
with those platforms through a social media team of some sort. Uh, like if you see how every company nowadays has their own Twitter account, uh, we have this idea of the social media intern. Nowadays for a really big company, this is actually going to be a multiple person team with a lot of expertise in things like psychology, sociology, marketing, all that kind of stuff. Um, but regardless, uh, that is organizations using social media and the users of social media as a whole. And then communities. We, we talked about this a little bit, but they are a group of people who all have something in common. The uh, idea of a community originally stemmed more from geographic region. So the uh, people that you grew up with, the people that you live near, all that kind of stuff. Um, maybe there were communities of interest, you know, based on shared interest but also were tied to geographic region simply because of the limitations of technology or something like that. But as our technology and communication grew more and more, it was easier and easier to build communities over larger and larger and larger areas. And eventually these stopped being tied to geographic region for the most part, um, especially once the internet came to be. Um, of course, there's like language barriers and geopolitical stuff that gets in the way of a complete uh, disregard for geographical region when it comes to uh, the growth of community. Right now, it still is relevant. Uh, if you are in the global north, you are more likely to be uh, in a community with people from the global north than anywhere else in the world, for example. But with the growth of the internet, there's much more of a uh, emphasis on related interest driving communities, especially with social media. Um, nowadays, if you are getting together with a group of people online, you're more likely to be getting together with them because you're both interested in the same thing. Maybe you both, you all share the same hobby or you all watch the same movies or something like that. You all listen to the same music. I don't know. But uh, related interest is a huge, huge factor when it comes to building communities on the internet. And you can find communities on the internet for almost any type of related interest. I stumbled across a few forums for people who are really, really interested in compression technology. If you think the zip files that you get from MyLibIT are kind of interesting, uh, just wait until you hear about what some of these people are doing, putting in months of work and making computers run at full power for hours and hours and hours of computation just to shrink files down to the minimum possible size uh, at the expense of time and electricity costs and all that kind of stuff. These people are dedicated to maximize or to minimizing the size of the files after compression. And it's wild and it's all facilitated by the internet because these are people from all over the world who are collectively working together to break new ground in compression. They're publishing scientific papers off of this kind of work. It is wild. So related interest is a huge driving factor in communities in the internet age. Now, of course, a social media information system is a, an information system. So it's going to have the same components that we're used to looking at for any information system, the hardware, the software, the data, the procedures, and the people. So let's talk about what those look like specifically for a social media information system. All right, so I'll talk about the hardware and the software together, um, focusing first on the providers side of things. They're going to be doing cloud servers. Uh, a lot of the stuff that we talked about when we were talking about the cloud in the IT section of Experiencing MIS. 
Uh, so big, beefy server farms, uh, handling a lot of connections by a lot of users, and there's probably going to be some sort of uh, content distribution network in play as well here, given that a social media site is probably going to have a lot of people from all across the world. A lot of this will be very proprietary. Now, they're storing a lot of information about users, uh, the actual relationships they have with other users that, you know, that they need to store whether or not a user is following another user or if they're friends in the case of Facebook. Um, they're going to be storing interests and uh, things that they're able to tell about that user based on the communities that they're in, the things that they engage with, all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of information for every user, gigabytes and gigabytes of inform information per user, and that's going to be multiplied by every other user. And it doesn't really fit into the relational databases, the type that we've seen in Microsoft Access. Uh, that's not going to fit very well in there, especially because it uh, has a lot of non-structured data or non-structural, structurable data, I suppose. Um, so it will probably be a NoSQL database. And as an example of a NoSQL database, we talked a little bit about Cassandra. It's just one type of NoSQL database that's out there, but Facebook actually created Cassandra specifically because they had so much user data to store and because it was really hard to store that data in a, a relational database. So they created Cassandra and then later made it open source for anybody to use. So that's the kind of technology that would be used. It's not the only one that would be used, but it is an example of what might be used. Uh, and of course, there's also the analytics software that's being run in order to gain knowledge of users and try to make recommendations for them, try to match uh, advertising to those users and so on and so forth. There's a lot going on behind the scenes on the provider's side of things. For users, this is a lot simpler. Uh, they will be using either web browsers or client applications, uh, ones that you would download from the App Store or from the Google Play Store. Uh, onto your device. Uh, they will use either one of those pieces of software in order to connect to the social media site. And the hardware in this case would be their own devices. Now, a lot of the data is going to be content data. This is the stuff that is generated by users. So any original posts that they make, uh, anything they upload as part of that as well. So pictures and videos and whatnot. Also the replies that they make. Uh, the actual content in the reply specifically is what I'm focusing on here. So all of that kind of stuff is going to be content data. That is content that users are contributing to the, so to the social media site. And that is the kind of stuff that would theoretically make people want to continue engaging with the social media site. Ideally, uh, users can be cruel, of course. There is also the connection data. So that is the relationships between individual users. And that data is really, really important for a social media platform, uh, both to help you know, make sure that users can stay connected to the people that they want to stay connected to. Uh, social media platforms have to store that information and then use that information in order to show a user which posts they actually want to see based on how they interact with other users, whether that's following them or uh, friending them or just uh, liking a whole bunch of their posts and then seeing their stuff through recommendation algorithms or stuff like that. But that connection data is also really useful for the advertisement side of things. And then we have the procedures, which are going to be uh, different based on who is actually using them. So the individual user, uh, the actual person who is using social media for personal reasons, they're going to be following internet safety procedures. So don't post your face, don't uh, reveal where you live, uh, log out of any devices that you don't own after you are 
done using the site on them, uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, that's the kind of procedures that an individual user would be following. With an organization, that's going to vary based on the organizational strategy and how that relates to their social media presence. But it will typically involve uh, the way that the social media team creates content, interacts with users, uh, prunes content, so maybe deleting old tweets or comments or something like that. I say tweets, uh, old posts from any social media. But like deleting old stuff if it becomes no longer relevant or if it uh, comes out that it was done kind of in bad taste or whatever. Also extracting value from content. So uh, actually, uh, actually transforming the content that they produce into people uh, going and you know buying their product or going to their restaurant or whatever but also extracting value from other people's content. So seeing someone uh, reference something that might be related to or vaguely related to, or that you can sort of insert yourself into as the social media team of an organization in order to bring more brand awareness. And also managing risk because there's a lot of uncontrolled stuff going on with social media. And, um, you know, people can respond in a lot of different ways uh, and it's important to try to you know manage risk maybe uh you know make yourself stand out from your competition in some way while not going too far and making a whole bunch of people annoyed one possibly really good example of uh, really good risk management in this is the Wendy's Twitter account, which paved the way for companies to be sarcastic and sassy and have that kind of presence on their social media accounts. And people really enjoyed it because it got rid of this idea of corporate stuffiness and all that kind of stuff. And they were engaging with it. And even if things went a little too far, they were able to control that risk because they built up this reputation of being really sarcastic and snappy and all that kind of stuff, and it made them a lot of money. So all of this kind of stuff is going to depend on how the organization that uh, runs the social media team, um, you know, the, the, the kind of presence that they want to have, the, the kind of... Uh, the word's not coming to me, but the, the way that they want people to think about them. Now for the providers, we are not going to worry about it because there are a lot of really complicated things that go into running a social media platform and actually making profit out of it. I talk about social networks and that kind of stuff. There's a lot of crazy math that goes into it and it has just a lot going on. You could get entire PhDs in that kind of math from the math side, the computer science side, but also, uh, you know, that stuff ties into psychology and sociology, like I said, and there's a lot of education that the experts on those sides of things get into. And all of that is just very complicated. These companies hire a lot of different people in order to make and follow these procedures, and it is very complicated. We're not going to worry about it. Now, the people uh, are, of course, the employees of the social media provider and the people who are actually using the social media. And in this case, when I talk about users, I'm talking about both the individuals, the civilians, if you will, who do just casual social media stuff, but also the businesses, the people who work for the social media teams uh, that are actually posting on social media there. That's just the people there. And that is just a brief overview of social media information systems. Uh, in, the, in the next video, we're going to talk a little more about how this can go into organizational strategy.